Hey, what's up, guys? It's uh, Tim Cannon here. I've got a new EP out today. So I thought I'd do a bit of a track breakdown of the title track, Pure Immersion. This EP is out now on Soul Deep. You can check this track out on a link on Ledge Sounds in the video description. Big up, Ledge Sounds. So, yeah, let's just go through this track and try and work out how I made it. Um, the first thing you'll notice on my screen is I have some other people's music in here and I find referencing, an, in fact, I'd say an indispensable way of uh, producing because I find it very hard to conjure up what a mix down should like from the depths of my own mind and find it much easier to just have a listen to some other tunes and hear how they're doing it now. I have rooted all of these tracks directly to the first outputs of my audio interface. And this is so they bypass the master bus processing I have. So that if I'm really cranking a clipper, say, on my master bus, that's not going to affect these reference tracks. I will hear them as the mastering engineer intended without any further processing. Now, let's have a look at my master track. What have I got on here? Well, I have a little bit of Fab Filter Pro Q3 that is just boosting those highs a teeny tiny amount. Then I have Standard Clip, which I've turned off on this because this is the pre-master project. And I wanted you to be able to hear everything without any kind of uh, dynamic range reduction. But normally I use Standard Clip in hard clip mode, sealing on whacking it up there. I get around 6 dB of gain reduction on there. And by having this clipper on my master, I can kind of hear how something's going to sound uh, when it's been mastered with all of that dynamic range reduction. And I can compare it to these other tracks and see how I'm doing, basically. And then when it comes to the final stage, I will bypass this uh, clipper and I'll also reduce the gain so that I'm hitting about minus 6 dB on Voxengo span, which seems to be a level that mastering engineers are happy to deal with. So let's look at the musical inspiration for this track. Now, a lot of the sounds, in fact, <laughs> I think the overwhelming majority of sounds of this track came straight out of Splice. That's right. Hey, don't work smarter, <laughs> work harder. Am I right? Um, so I believe the first sound that I kind of heard that gave me a bit of inspiration as to what I was going to be doing with this tune is this can blaster chord one shot precious E flat minor let's have a listen to it now instant logical progression jazzy vibes there which is very much what I'm aiming for and if you hear a sound like that you're a drum and bass guy you're like oh I could make a lovely atmospheric rollout out of that. And the kind of the rest of the tube basically writes itself as long as you've got some decent sounds. Now, what's weird about this sound is that I've done an edit here <laughs> where I've just look at this. I've just smashed it into another part of the sample. The flipping <laughs> line doesn't even line up. So you can hear that there's a bit of a uh I'll take it. I'll take the processing off here. That isn't even on, so we'll delete that. Let's have another listen. Little bit of a click there. It's not completely egregious, but you know, I should really give myself a slap on the wrist for that. So when I've got this sound, I've got a vibe. Also, I've got a key, E flat minor, which is basically the lowest key that I'd ever work in. I really tend to work from kind of like D-sharp to A-sharp, but recently, certainly, uh, between sort of F and G-sharp. And that's those are really easy keys to work in because you can get a really full weighty sub that kind of sits in your 50 hertz range and your kind of, your root note isn't going to be too high or too low. So once I've got like an element like this that kind of defines where the track's going, then I'll tend to work on some drums. Now, you can see I've got a lot of tracks in this project. Uh, there's a lot of processing on them. I didn't make all of these tracks one by one, and then magically at the end, they added up to make a complete tune. Generally with my projects, there is a lot of mucking about, going back and forth, doing trial and error, trial and error, really trying to um, make stuff sound good, basically. Um, the drums, I find, are the hardest bits to get to sound decent. 
Um, especially if you're making drum and bass that has kind of breakbeat layers and stuff and everything, it has the potential to get really messy and <laughs> it can be quite a lot of work to make it sound good. So let's have a listen to my beat. We'll open up the drum group here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just bypass all of my other groups so that we've just got the drums to listen to. So... Let's listen to the drop section. Okay, here I've got the drop section of the beats soloed so that you can't hear any of the other elements. Let's listen to those drums. Okay, so that's very, very washy with the breaks there. I like a nice airy break sound. Um, not, not too much low in the breaks because I find that can tend to kind of um, interfere with my kick and snare one shots and everything. And with modern drum and bass, everything's very fast, obviously. You really need, I feel like, I want room for those, for the low end of those kicks and the snares to have room to kind of like breathe and be heard and be rhythmic. So before we go into the breaks, let's just have a listen to the one shots. So first we have the main kick body here. Pretty simple. Bass drum of 1425, God knows where that comes from. I haven't even processed it at all. All this processing is bypassed. Apart from I have, I'm just using the left channel. I like my kicks to be mono. Why wouldn't you? Um, I haven't even done any uh, high passing. doesn't really sound like this sound has needed it. Um, in the original version of this track, I actually did a, a version which I sent out to be mastered. And I found that the kick drum was too bassy and too loud in the mix. And it was kind of giving the brakes a bit of a stop start feel because it felt like when the kick was playing, it was so loud that it kind of distracted from the rolling rhythms of the brakes and all that. So I ended up re you know, redoing the kick or whatever, mucking about with the mix load and then ending up paying for the tracks to be uh, mastered again. So yeah, in fact, I ended up redoing bits of the drums on all three of the tracks. So I ended up paying for the EP to be remastered again. Uh, but for me, it was worth it because I don't really like the idea of tracks out there with, you know, errors or, well, perceived errors and stuff that I find to be just really upsetting or whatever. I'd rather pay a few extra quid and just, you know, have have something that I like that re represents me out there. And I'm part of uh, what I did to get a kick sound that I enjoyed was I added this kind of distorted layer. Um, let's have a listen to this. Mmm. Yes. I mean, on its own, it sounds pretty wild, but in the context of the beat, I mean, even with the, even with the other kick on there, it sounds nuts. Yeah, it sounds crazily, like, distorted and tech-steppy, but in the context with everything else going... I feel like that sounds all right. Um, so the hats... These are some hi-hats. I've EQ'd them, as you can see. To, oh, God, taking so much load out there. Also, I'm using delay to get a bit of swing on there. Um, if we turn the delay off, we've just got eighth notes. And then with the delay, we have some... Uh, so, well, we've got some syncing going on. Normally, I just set the time manually. And even if I was going to sync, I'd set it to one sixteenth note. I've set it to three sixteenth notes here. Uh, pretty bonkers um but i'm using a very low uh wet level and the uh, the swung uh, 16ths aren't too loud you get a nice kind of rushy feel though the velocity is consistent all the way through not terribly uh, realistic but you know we've got these breaks in here that make stuff sound cool so anyway before we look at the breaks let's look at these snares i've got a snare group here so what have we got we've got one snare Oh, Kashmir. I use my fair share of Kashmir Vengeance sounds, and I refuse to apologise for it. They're great. And uh, especially if you've got a lot of other stuff going on in your track, it's not immediately obvious. Hey, and if it, even if it is immediately obvious, like the three people in the world who are going to judge you for using Kashmir and Vengeance samples, do you really care about what they think? Maybe. I don't know. Um, let's have a listen to this other layer on the snare. It's just a side stick, guys. Layer that up with the snare. Kind of a nice 
attacky snare sound. It's pretty cool. Um, and then we've got the brakes. Now, obviously, I'm a 90s guy. I love my brakes. They're very dear and important to me. Uh, nothing on this on this subgroup. So we have hot pants. And here, crazily, normally I process the heck out of hot pants. I've literally just got a um, Fab Filter Q3 here. You can see now with hot pants, that shaker <laughs> will give you um, a lot of resonance and stuff. Also, I've cut out the low end. Very often I'll use Soothe 2 to cut out that kind of like harshness. I haven't here for some reason. It's just Fab Filter Pro Q3. Let's listen. Well, it's a hot pants, guys. I don't really know what you're expecting. Okay, and then next we have the Ruffy Manic One Mic Drum Loop, I believe it's originally called. This is from an AMG sample library from the 90s. And I've really processed the heck out of this. So this Neutron Transient Shaper, it's you're really getting loads of artifacts on there. I feel like I'm, yeah, I'm really like taking the room sound down on there by reducing the mid-band sustain. Um, you know, on its own, it sounds a lot better if you take that off. But it's all about the context. And I've reduced the width there as well. That must have been stereo, I guess. Though for one mic, would it have been? Who cares? Doesn't matter. Okay, so we have Ruffy and Hot Pants together. It takes two to make a thing go right. But hey, what if we had three? That's right. Versatile extension, a drum break that people have been using in drum bass very, very heavily over the past few years. <laughs> Me especially. I love this break. It's like, I, you know, I think it's basically composed out of uh, one shots. Um, and they're balanced very, very nicely. You speed it up. Sounds great, whatever pitch. And just instantly gives you like a rolly, steppy vibe. Um, I don't think I've had to do... Oh, I have used Shaper Box here um, to remove... Well, to lower the volumes of the kicks and the snares here because I guess they're interfering with my one-shots and other breaks. And in Ableton Live, I always put Shaper Box at the start of the processing chain because it has an issue. Uh, Ableton Live and Shaper Box don't really see eye to eye on the uh, kind of in the realm of plug-in delay compensation and you can get some sync issues if you have it after any other effects so I always have shape a box first in the chain if I'm using it let's hear how uh, this break sounds with the other break layers very nice indeed and the final break here is do the do and this is better known as the horizons break beats because uh it was sampled for Horizons. And I think this version of the break I actually got from a sample pack that sampled Horizons itself. Let's have a listen. So there I've got a bit of Soothe on there. There can be a bit of harshness in the Horizons break. And I'm, yeah, I'm taking some more top end out of it. And you know, the low end isn't, you know, the low end's been basically removed. Let's hear how all these breaks sound together. Nice and clean, you know, not too much low end, barely any low end, to interfere with these one shots. Let us hear the one shots and the breaks together. That sounded all right, but hey, what if I wanted some more percussion sounds? And I did. Let's listen. Congas, yes, please. Incredibly quiet, but it adds a little something to the beat. We got some rides. Oh, and these have got a phaser on them to kind of move them around in stereo. A little bit of reverb on there to make them sound natural. A ride loop? Now look, this appears to be an actual drum and bass loop. I would very, very rarely use anything from a drum and bass sample pack. Um, because... I find sounds that aren't from drum bass packs generally more flexible and you can kind of turn them into a drum bass format yourself and kind of work on how you like. Whereas with a drum bass sample pack, I don't know, I tend to find some of the sounds can be a bit on the nose for me. Um, here though, I didn't, this is clearly, I've, you know, I've searched 
splice for some kind of ride loop and here's what it's come up with this 170 drum loop um which worked great in the context of the track though i did shaper box it yes i'm just reducing the kicks there filtering out the low end bit of eq i'm taking out some resonances and the highs there i did some work on this track okay and they've got a tambourine loop very quiet again you know, I've got some uh, shaper box going on. I've got some, you know, transient shaping, all kinds of shaping. And then after the second drop, I bring in some uh, bongos. And uh, yeah, and because this, this part of the track is more pared down. So I wanted some kind of extra rhythmic interest to keep it sounding rolling. Tribal vibes, guys. Okay, so now we've got the, the beat going. Um, let's have a look at adding some more musical elements. Okay, so the musical parts of the track, the vibe comes from this sound we heard earlier. And then I've used a bunch of other sounds to kind of build up a kind of melodic groove. So what have we got here? We've got another electric piano sound. Very nice kind of uh, filter LFO sort of thing. Oh yeah. And then some more electric pianos. Very nice. I mean, you know, I'm not really doing a lot here. Some <laughs> high passing or whatever. Some stereo stuff with uh, ozone imager. I mean, I'm really not changing the sound much. This is a sort of Sound selection is the important thing here. We've got a, another EP, I guess. Very nice. It's all just picking the right sounds. What have we got here? Lovely. And then I've got a bit of chopped up guitar here. Um, just slicing it up to, to fit the rhythm of the track nicely. And this is a little bit more hooky. Um, with atmospheric drum bass, I tend not to kind of like go for big crazy hooks but I do like a little something you know to kind of tickle your ears a little bit keep keep you interested or whatever let's listen to this very nice created by a real person playing a real instrument something I could and would never do um okay what else have we got on here we've got some uh, plucky I've called this track what is this okay hang on it's just a little tiny bit of an organ. Little tiny organ, guys. Can you ask for anything more? Um, okay, what else? And then we've got... Oh, now. Okay, I've actually created a sound here, guys. Stop the flipping presses. Um, Mystery Islands, F minor 9. This is a chord sample I created from a Korg TR rack that I managed to get for a very reasonable price off eBay before the price of everything started going totally crazy. What more can I say? Good looking record vibes all day and all night. And that's what I want. And that gives... So, we, you know, this is all, all this stuff down here is kind of cosy. But then we've got a little bit of darkness coming in from this Mystery Islands. Taking you back to the late 90s. And uh, the days of Good Liquor Records double packs, which was the greatest time in human history. Um, what else? Harp JV. This is just a harp patch coming off a JV synth. Pretty surprising, I know. Just playing real simple arpeggio. Um, Western Wind is this track called? It's a pigments patch. Let's listen. That's giving me a little bit of PFM Western vibes. It's kind of mysterious and wistful. And, you know, together with these bazillions of other elements, it's uh, it's creating a vibe, which is really what this is all about. Let's, uh, let's listen again. And then what we've got coming here, but yet another electric piano sample. I mean, <laughs> at this point, it's all just blurring into one. Let's have a listen. Yeah. 
and then with the beats, you get the idea. Oh, we've got some nice vocals in here. What, a bit of sax as well? Let's hear. Well, once the sax, it's literally just time stretched to be in time. What else? Compression, high pass, stereo, delay, and some gain. Real, nothing rocket science or whatever. It's just, you know, mucking about, trying to get the exact right settings for everything. A nice little vocal sample there, yet again from Splice. Um, I put some overdrive on this to kind of make it kind of like feel rougher and older and everything. Some chorus to make it nice and stereo, sounding all right. You don't want to say goodbye. What else? A brass loop? Is this going to be yet another textural layer that I've added? Yes, yes it is. That's exactly what it is. Again, cutting out the low end. I mean, really, if if all a lot of this stuff didn't have the low end cut out of it, this mix would sound like a gosh darn mess that nobody wants to hear. Um, something weird I noticed that I added in this, this thing. Piano loops, jazzy keys, 110 BPM. If you listen to the track, you would not really imagine this was in here. Really hasn't got anything else to do with the context it's in, but I guess it provides a bit of nice texture. Yeah, real subtle. In this section, we've got a few more vocals, again, chopped up. Yeah, for atmospheric drum bass, what I like is real simple ad-libs or whatever, don't really say anything. I know we have another little vocal there that actually says something, but I do just like kind of, you know, real vague R&B or house style little bits of ad-libs, great stuff. Um, what else here? We've got a signy lead. Let's listen to this. That's quite nice. Just a little sound out of uh, ultra analog. So yeah, I mean, I work in uh, music tech sort of stuff, making tutorial content for my day job. So I get a fair few NFLs and stuff like that. So I have a wide selection of synths and stuff to pick sounds from. I mean, here, I really could have just like made my own <laughs> sign lead. But hey, there was a really nice uh, preset I found in uh, ultra analog VA3. Why make your life complicated? Also, I've got I've got sound here from a structure. Again, I've composed this myself. All two notes of it like a genius. Yeah, G sharp one and D sharp one. Amazing. Uh, this is just a clav sound. I'm not gonna open the instrument interface because it will make uh, Ableton Live crash for some reason. This plugin's pretty old. Um, so I've got this clav and it's got a bit of an auto filter on there to give it some movements. And then some delay with some stuff that's really dirting up on there. We've got isotope vinyl in there. We've got some redux on there. Um, and this sound is, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it is quite important because it kind of like, it's a bit of a rhythmic sort of hook that keep, like helps drive the track basically. <laughs> And so you can see this is a big kind of like collage of different sounds, kind of like lots of call and out stuff going on, you know, stuff coming in or whatever. Not not crazy amounts of stuff playing over the top of each other. Every little sound kind of like let, gets its little moment to come in. For example, these nice little disco stabs. And then, I don't just play it again, I play it very short and then long. This is the kind of creativity that you come to expect from your boy Timmy. Yeah, I like how that sounds. Cool, all right. Okay, I think that's basic. Oh, no, that's not all the instruments. I've got another lead. Yes, Timmy's done it again with his compositional skills. Check this uh, Check this out. What have we got here? We've got like, <laughs> we've got two notes and then we've got uh, another two notes. Just wild and crazy. Oh, and they're all, <laughs> yeah, they're the same notes just on different octaves. Amazing stuff. Let's listen. And then it does it octave down. Now, what is this lovely, lovely synth making this lovely lead? Well, hey, 
It's Zebra CM. That's right. Um, back in the day, I used to work full time computer music uh, magazine, doing um, writing a lot of the content and doing the cover disc stuff. And so. Um, when uh, the Zebra CM is a free synth that you get with Computer Music Magazine, and I kind of like doing a bit of the organisation with Uhi when it came out, and it was very exciting, because obviously Uhi one of the best plugin developers in the flipping world. They made a lovely synth for us, and in the past couple of years, it's been updated to work on modern systems, so I'm very happy to have it back. And in this sound I've used, it is based on the DigiWhip preset, I think this um, filter step stuff, I think... I think I programmed that in. I can't really remember. Um, I've definitely used this field steppy stuff before because it's got this cool delay thing that can give you um, kind of like a sort of gliding effect on the filter things. For some reason, it doesn't seem to want to actually do anything in this patch. I can't really can't remember how it works. It's not doing anything. If you want to check out my track GeForce, that has got some lovely slidey Zebra CM noises in there. And I think that is about the size of the music stuff. So let's look at the bass. Now, this is real simple. Um, especially these days, I tend not to use a lot of crazy bassiness. I tend to use 808 or synth well, synthesized 808 style kicks, um, just straight up subs, or maybe like a sub with some volume modulation on it to give it a bit of rhythmic mu movement. Generally, I'll program everything from scratch to zoom. Though here, weirdly, I've used Sunriser, which is a pretty nice um, Roland JP1000 emulation, which includes some uh, really great um, Oral Imbalance presets. So check it out. And big up Oral Imbalance and ASC, doing a lot of the atmospheric scene at the moment. Um, and this sound is just, it's just a sub bass, guys. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, it's got a little bit of, it's got some, you know, some juice in the octaves above the, octaves, I should say, above the sub. You know, pretty simple. Hits an octave up there. Great. Um, by the way, basically everything is in this track is side chain to kick and the snare, which you can see on the bus. So I want the kick and the snare to punch through. Okay, we've got some riser effects as well. What's happening with these? Okay, pitch riser seems to be noisy. <laughs> and white riser is pitched. I have done a terrible job labeling these. Also, really not a lot of effects in this track <laughs> for an atmospheric DB tune in 2023. Whatever. I mean, there's certainly a lot of the track in terms of other sounds. I mean, I guess it's. I guess really the core of this track is all these textures and kind of little melodic ideas coming in from the samples. And then we've got some percussion. Oh, now this is nice. This is just like a little, this is almost kind of like a sort of trap style sort of thing or whatever. I mean, it doesn't sound very trappy in the context, but let's listen. So what is going on here? Um, it's just some pitch bend guys, uh, pretty simple. Going from nothing to all the way down. Um, I am using Ableton Sampler for this. Oh, I've got Pitch Bend Rage of 12. So it's actually pitch bending down an octave. And doesn't it sound nice? And then it goes into this drum fill. This is a drum fill from an old Bind tune that I uh, saved out. Little recycling tip for you there. Um, I, I like this sound. The tune itself was god awful. This little sound is cool. So I uh, whacked it in there and it sounds nice. And if we have the crash after that, let's listen to this whole thing. It creates a nice little, <laughs> this, is, this is a little, one of the keys to, <laughs> to drum and bass arrangement. You can basically have the same thing going again and again, but if you have a little kind of thing at the end, a little, some kind of rhythmic hook or whatever, when you go back into the, basically the exact same thing, it kind of sounds fresh and new. I mean, I do try and kind of like add or remove or change up elements every 16 bars or whatever, but this sort of thing really does help keep things refreshing. So there we go, and that, I mean that's basically it in terms of what sounds I've used. Let's look at the arrangement here. So I'm going to delete the reference track so we you can see the arrangement a bit better. So we're just starting off with beats and kind of like sort of EP sounds, like piano sounds. 
and it's kind of this arrangement is kind of progressive it just builds up you get the sax coming in some more breakbeat layers then that sort of clav sound your vocals and then this okay so let's look at actually let's look at the drop when i'm creating my tracks i'll generally have like kind of like a little bit of a loop to start with typically start with the drums because they're so important to get right in drum and bass then i'll add some you know or maybe i'll have one musical element setting the key so that i know i know where we're sitting pitch wise um so i'll have some drums going on or whatever and some bass and i'll get kind of like maybe a 16 bar loop going and i'm like okay this sounds like it might be a bit of music then what i'll do is i'll create another 16 bar which is the the section before the drop so that I can hear what it's like when the bass comes in in that section before the drop might have no drums it might be a breakdown or it might be like this where it is you know it's beats and musical elements but no bass and what I've done here is I've got a little section I've got it's just one bar before the drop where a bunch of the drums cut out also on this uh no that's not what I'm doing oh god I don't even know how to use live um I have a high pass filter on the drum bus that only turns on for this one bar here and uh, when it's turned on it's just a filter sweep so it's kind of like high pass sweeping everything in let's hear how this drop sounds So it's just high passing the beats in there. I mean, generally with the drum bass drops, I mean, I certainly feel like I do just like, I muck about a lot and do a lot of different bits of sleight of hand to try and get the drop to sound nice, basically. And that will involve stuff like, you know, low and high pass filtering, volume automation, sort of sounds coming in and going out. And that's basically it. Um, so then we have the drop. Side lead coming in there, disco stabs. Then we have that filter steppy lead. And do you know what? We only have like 48 bars of like, you know, proper full on DB action before we get to the breakdown. I feel like this isn't really, that's not really an arrangement style I'd usually use. But I felt like in this track, it was kind of like, okay, we're dropping. Here's all the different bits that we're going to add or whatever. Now you can have a break. And then we're going to come back in with this uh, drop that is kind of like a bit more pared back, but it's got those bongo-y elements. So let's, let's hear how, how it all works. So, you know, in the D&B rave, you've got 22 seconds to, you know, I mean, think about your life choices or whatever while you're not dancing. You're waiting desperately for the drum and the bass to come back in and, you know, crowd out all thoughts that you've had. Let's hear him come in. And I like this second drop because even though it's not really complicated, it sounds nice, nice and smooth and kind of full with the extra drum sounds in there. And then we have plenty of space to kind of bring in the other elements. Clav, sax, other synthy noises. That's the harp coming in. Yeah, there we have the harp again. Well, the filter step thing. Bring the vocal back in, why not? More sax action. Yeah, keep the saxes rolling. He doesn't love it. And then I have 16 bars with no bass before the end. The horizon break has gone out there, so this, you know, this part's less washy. And you know, hopefully that would aid a DJ in uh, creating a nice satisfying mix so that's basically the track i mean with all of my tunes um i mean this actually this tune came together a lot quicker than a lot of my tunes generally when this happens it's due to just the luck of the draw of having sounds that work together nicely don't require a lot of mucking about i mean these days i really find if i'm struggling with tune for ages and ages and i'm starting to not enjoy it that for me is a sign that it needs binning probably and that i'll never be happy with it um though i do i do really try and you know make it work basically um and i've had um good like dj support from this um ltj bookham told me played it out which is a big deal for me 
you know, um, I, re I really love it when my DJ heroes like play my tunes out. Also, uh, Nikki and PFM said they play it out, which is, you know, really incredibly exciting for me. I mean, you know, these guys that who I've for my entire adult life I've really looked up to and everything so it's really nice to get that kind of positive feedback and um BC played another track off the EP as well on uh, the Spearhead podcast so you know I, I feel like um I'm happy with this track and it's also had you know some level of support from other people so I can be you know fairly objectively certain that it's decent and of course scott allen soul deep putting it out uh for me as well so i have that i have that very important validation uh from uh, another person who i have an enormous amount of respect for so uh yeah it's uh very yes i'm really happy with this ep overall and hey i hope you've uh, enjoyed this video i hope my witching hasn't been too much for you and um, if you have liked the sound of my drum and bass music please check out pure immersion ep out now on soul deep on all your digital uh services also got a um a collab with greek boy transcendental mancha that's coming out on soul deep on vinyl this year and digital so look out for that apparently it's going to be on a red vinyl so uh, another color to add to my collection of weirdly colored, colored vinyls that i've put out um so there we have it so thanks very much for watching please like and subscribe Look after yourself, love yourself, love each other, and for God's sake, take care out there. Bye-bye.